All right, good morning. Let's get this meeting started. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What is happening, everybody? How are we doing? It is Tuesday morning, and I am excited to be here with you guys today. Very excited. Brendan and myself are here in the studio, and we're going to get a few people online right now. Let me get centered here so I can talk about today's sales meeting, which, which is an important a subject to discuss and is called the process. So whether you're joining us on Zoom Live or whether you're joining us on Facebook Live, I encourage everybody to take notes and get ready to talk about the process, the process in the steps to the sale. And, you know, again, we really focus a lot on automotive dealers, but it doesn't matter what business you're in. There's always a process to a sale, and we call it the 10 steps to a sale in the automotive industry. And we have a process in place because it works. You see, what I love about the process, what I love about the 10 steps to the sale is if you do the 10 steps to the sale every single time, guess what? You're going to have a great chance of being successful. However, if you skip steps and you skip the process, guess what? Well, you might not sell that vehicle. You might not sell whatever you're selling. And the reason is, is because the process is there for a reason. And I say that, I mean, think about this. If you go to Disney World, and most of us have been to Disney World, for example, and we happen to live next to Orlando, so it's pretty convenient for us. We, we only live a couple hours away from there. So when we take our family to, to Disney World, there's a process that they have. Everything has a process. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Even when you go to, in one of the rides, right? You know the lines. You have the lines. And the lines, you go straight and you go walk around. And they have this process. And the reason why they have that process when you're getting on to the rides, even if there's a 40-minute wait for some of these rides, it doesn't feel like it because you're always moving. So I want to talk about the 10 steps to the sale, what we call the process. And it's right here in our automotive sales training manual. If you've been to our class, you already have this. Hey, if you haven't been to the class and you want this, you let me know and we'll get one out to you. The process is very, very, very important. So let's talk about the process. Let me show you what the process is. First of all, step number one, and if you can see it right behind me, hopefully I'm not in front of that. Let me move over. Can you, can you see it clearly, Brent? Yeah, you're good. All right. Step number one is the meet and the greet. This is simple enough, right? Simple enough? Well, I'll tell you what. Most people think it's fairly simple, but it's actually not. In fact, I actually love to see brand new people in the industry first go out there and meet a customer. And it doesn't matter what you're selling. I mean, you could be selling cars, which is what we're focusing on, but you could be selling boats or, or selling brand new model houses. It's very funny. People don't know what to say. They fumble the ball. Stuff comes out of their mouth they never thought would come out of their mouth before. It's like, it's, it's so funny to see it. But the first step is you got to meet and you got to greet. And you want to do it very professionally. You want to mirror your customer, and you want to be you want to greet with a very very big smile on your face. I mean, think about it. You want to you want to have a firm handshake, but not too tight, with a smile on your face. And you want to welcome the person. Be welcome and be open. I mean, we've all experienced being greeted. It doesn't matter if it's at a car dealership or a McDonald's or or or, or any kind of store where you get greeted by somebody and it's not the most friendly greeting, right? Can I help you? Hey, what can I do for you today? No smile, kind of depressing, right? Think about it. We've been there, done that. I mean, it happens all the time. But no, when you greet somebody with a big smile and you welcome them, hey, welcome to my dealership. My name is Matt. What's yours? And you always ask for their name. So when they give you their name, now you have their name. You can call them by their name. Studies have shown that people love to be called by their name. So it's important that you remember their name. Please don't forget their name. And if you have a problem remembering names, I'm going to suggest that you write it down somewhere, okay? Because the worst thing you want to do, last thing you want to do, is five minutes later say, excuse me, what was your name again? Okay? You don't want to do that. See, this is the process. First step is meet and greet. Nice smile, welcoming. Hey, welcome to my dealership. My name is Matt and yours is... Let them give you a first name. They're usually going to say, my name is Tom. And then you, you, put, you keep the, your hand shaking. You say, Tom. And you lean in a little bit. So they'll give you the last name. Tom Jones. Great, Mr. Jones. Thank you for showing. How can I be of service to you today? Don't ask, can I help you? Because if you ask, can I help you, that opens you up for, no, I don't need any help. Thanks. I'm just looking. How can I be of service to you today? I don't need any help. Well, I can't service you? Okay, no problem. No, I'm like kidding. Of course not. But you want to say, you can overcome the objections that come up. No one's really going to say, after you ask them, how can I be a service here? Nobody's really going to say, I don't need any help. 
Everybody needs help. They're there for a reason, guys. So remember that. So step one is meet and greet. And of course, we really expand on our steps, on the process as we have our training programs on a weekly basis here at the Institute, as well as at the dealership when we go do our sales meetings. We only have about 20 to 30 minutes here today. So if you have any questions, I want you to, to ask questions, whether you're on Zoom, whether you're on Facebook, go ahead and ask those questions. Brendan's standing by right there. He's going to field those questions for you. Any comments at all, be, be my guest and put those comments in there. But again, the first step is meet and greet. And the reason why you want to have that meet and greet is because that sets up the rest of the steps. You see, when you have a positive greeting and you greet the person with respect and you greet them with a smile and you greet them openly, and then you say to them, hey, no problem. What you want to do is next step is make a friend. Now you want to, you want to bridge into that step. Hey, I'm here to look for the, uh, I'm here to look at a Sonata. You know, I've seen them online. I've driven them a couple times. They're really nice. I kind of like them. So I kind of want to check out the Sonatas and, and uh, I want to see, uh, you know, I want to drive one. Hey, great. No problem, man. Thanks for shopping here. I really appreciate it. Have you have any chance to, 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 to look at any specific model that you're interested in? Yeah, I'm interested in this one or this one. Hey, great. No problem. Follow me. Let's go find that model for you. So you bridge into the next step, which is making a friend, okay? You want to definitely, and this is very important, you want to make a friend. You want the customer to trust you. You want them to show that you're not there to sell them. Guys, don't sell here. Don't sell at this step. I mean, you just met the person. Don't sell. Make a friend. Listen to the customer. This is what I call the secret sauce. I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna put it in caps because this is the secret sauce to the sale. That's right. The secret sauce is when you have, when you make a friend with the customer, they trust and like you, they're gonna buy something from you. But if you're a pushy salesperson, they're not gonna buy something from you. If you show that you really don't care about them, they're not gonna buy something from you. So show them that you care by asking questions here. Find out a little bit about themselves. Hey, you can talk more about themselves than you can about your product. So for example, find out where they're from, why they're looking to use their product. Find out if they're married, if they're not married, if they have children, if they don't have children. Find out these things, what they do for a living. Because this is going to be very important in the following steps. If you do a proper step number two, the secret sauce, and you make a friend, and you find out all the particular details, well then guess what? This step will tell you exactly how to sell your customer, what's important to them. And it'll also tell you any objections that you're going to run into when you're negotiating with them. So remember, this step is vitally important, guys. This is, this is everything, in my opinion, when it comes to the steps of the sale. Because step number two will let you know the most important thing for you to find out, which is what is it going to take to sell this customer a vehicle or whatever you're selling. Again, I think this step should always be done sitting down. Never do this step outside. Never do this step while somebody's looking for the product because they're not paying attention to you. You want to have full attention being paid to you and you being paying full attention to them because you're taking notes here. In fact, one of the things I used to do is when I sat down a customer and I, I asked them permission, I said, Mr. And Mrs. Uh, Jones, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take some notes. This way I don't forget uh, anything that you tell me. Is that okay? And what that does, and of course everybody says, no, no problem. I've never had anybody say, no, you're not allowed to take notes. Never. But what that does is it tells them that you care about them because you're not going to forget anything. You want to make sure that you have all the information that you need in, 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 in order to take care of them. This is a very important step. In fact, in our manual, we have what we call the guest sheet because some dealerships use the guest sheet. And the guest sheet is something similar to this. I mean, this is a generic one, but a lot of dealerships like to have the guest sheet filled out. Now, I want to stop for a second and say this. We talk about the 10 steps to the sale here. Every dealership is different, whether it's the exact wording there or whether it might be off a little bit. The process is the process is the process. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. It works in unison. It works perfect, okay? So the guest sheet, for example, asks you a lot of different questions, and it's really good questions. For example, here's a question if you're in a car business, what you should ask a customer. Hey, have you test driven this car anywhere else before? Because if they say yes, well, guess what? Now you know they test drove it. They were somewhere else. You don't need to ask them where. Don't ask them where. It doesn't matter. But that's a good question, right? Some other questions are, where are you from? What are you going to be using this vehicle for? Like, for example, somebody does a lot of highway driving. On your test drive, do you want to just take them around the corner? No, of course not. You want to take them on the highway, guys. See, so step two is really important. Step two 
is the guest sheet, making a friend, interview, whatever you want to call it. Find out what the customer wants. Again, this step is the secret sauce to any sale. It will tell you exactly what you need to sell the customer a car, what's important to them, as well as any potential objections that might come up in the selling process. Very, very good step. Which also bridges into step number three, because what's going to happen is this. You're going to turn around to your customer after spending about 20 minutes with them, making a friend, building rapport, building trust, letting them know that you're a professional, that you actually care about them, that's really true that you care about them. And you're going to say, folks, if you don't mind, excuse me for a few minutes, I'm going to go get the particular vehicle that you're here to look for. Is that fair enough? Of course they're going to say yes. And then you're going to go step into step number three. Step number three is you need to touch the desk. Go see your sales manager. In the automotive industry, go see your sales manager. Please go see your sales manager. It's a simple step. Just go say, hey, boss, I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and they're looking for the, uh, the 2014 Volkswagen Passat, and um, you know, I just want to let you know what they're here for. They came for that. I'm going to go show them this particular vehicle right now. I'm going to go get it, okay? Is there anything you want me to do at this point? All you're doing here is letting the manager know where you are in the process. Very powerful, and there's a couple of reasons why you should do this every time. Number one, your sales manager is a sales manager for a reason. They have experience. They've been there. They've done that. They can guide you in the right process. And hey, if you're on a new vehicle, this is very important. If your customer came for a new vehicle, and let's say they're looking at the, the white Honda Accord that's sitting out right there on the showroom floor. Well, that car might have just came off the truck literally a couple of days ago, and now it's on the showroom floor, right? And your customer might want that car. However, you might have another exactly the same car with the same equipment, same everything, same color, just a different VIN number sitting in the back that may have been here already for the last five or six months that your manager will know about, but you may not know about. And there might be even a little bonus on that car. So you want to make sure you get the same car, what they're talking, no switching here, give them what they want, but it might be a little bit, it might be just sitting in the back somewhere. It's been here for a few months. Makes sense, right? So definitely touch the desk. Let your manager know where you are in the process. And of course, that's going to let them help you in any way, shape, or form. And if, if they're really good sales managers, they're going to want to go introduce themselves to your customer and say, hey, thank you for coming in, Mr. and Mr. Jones. My name is Matt. I'm the sales manager here. Just want to let you know. Really appreciate your opportunity to earn your business. Looking forward to working with you. Makes sense, doesn't it? Then that goes into your selection process. Step number four. Selection. Now, selection is with or without the customer. What does that mean? You know, in most dealerships, at least down here in South Florida, uh, we have a dealerships, they're mega dealerships. I mean, we have a thousand cars on the lot. Last thing you want to do is bring your customer uh, with you to go get the particular vehicle that you're going to go, that they're, that they're actually there to look for. Because they walk into the sea of cars, man, and it's really confusing for them. In fact, Last thing you want to do is that. Now, if they're defiant, they say, I want to go with you, then you have to take them. But if you say to them, hey, folks, look, I'll go, get, I'll go look for the vehicle. It's really cold outside or it's really hot outside. Here's a bottle of water. I'll go get the car for you. No worries. A couple of reasons why. Number one, you don't want to confuse them. Number two is if they're, if, they're, if they're, like, for example, husband and wife and kids, what do you think happens? You're walking them out. The kids are in one car. The wife's in another car. The husband's looking at the other car. The last thing you want to do, you want to control that process. Don't bring them with you if you can. And the same thing is this. A lot of times what happens is cars do sit on a lot for a little while. Okay? Typically here in Florida, especially in the summer months, I mean, there's, I can't tell you how many countless times I would go to go get a vehicle for a customer that they're looking for, and it's two or three cars deep. And if you're in the business, you know what I mean. They're parked behind two or three cars. And you go to start the car. Guess what happens? It doesn't start. <laughs> it's not that the car's bad. It's just probably just a dead battery. Okay? Something was left on. It happens. And you don't want that to be because we can just simply go get a jump box and start the car, one, two, three. So again, selection process, but do it without the customer, okay? Do it without the customer because you don't want to confuse the customer. You want to keep them in a nice air-conditioned office waiting for you to bring that car. Because when you bring that car, especially in the summertime, guys, because if it's 100 degrees outside and your customer gets into that car, how, how hot you think it is in the car, right? You don't want that. So now you're going to bring up the car and you're going to pull the car up to the front. And you're going to get ready for your vehicle presentation. You're going to have the car cooled off, the air conditions will be on. Hey, if it's in the wintertime and you're up north, you're going to have the heat on. You're going to open up all the doors, man. All the doors. You're going to open up the trunk. You're going to open up the hood. You're going to open up the gas tank. You're ready, man. You are ready to give a full vehicle presentation. When I talk about full vehicle presentation, I talk about you are an actor. You are an actress. You're on stage. You're on Broadway. Lights are on. Curtain is up. 
Go for it, man. Give that presentation like you have never given a presentation before. Don't skip on this, guys. Don't skip on this. This is so important. Show the people that you care about them by giving a solid vehicle presentation every time. Even if it's on a used car, you don't know much about it. Give a vehicle presentation. Very important that you listen here. Vehicle presentation based on what's important to them that they told you in step two. You want to give a presentation about what's important to them. For example, if, if they have young children, you want to give a presentation based on that safety that they said is important to them. You even want to bring the baby seat and show them how to put the baby seat in the car. You want them to be involved in that presentation. Use your body language. Use their body language. Let them do the certain things. Like, for example, if you're showing a, a baby seat, how a baby seat gets put into the back seat, grab their hand. Have them feel those steel iron grates that are in between the seats that hold that seat down. Let them get physically involved. Give that presentation solidly. Do a two-time, three-time walk around, showing them the specs and the features and what's important to them in step number two. Hey, look, if the most important thing to them is the safety features, for example, do you want to go over you know, the, the twin turbo engine that you're selling them? Probably not. You want to show them the safety features. I'm not saying you don't go over the performance. Everybody wants to know about performance. But what's important to them in step number two, right? What's important to them in step number two? Give that vehicle presentation. Guys, don't slack here. Do it. Hey, man, you want to make sure that you are on stage. Show them that you care. Throughout this entire process, you're putting little nuggets in their head that says they're buying a vehicle from you. Then you go into step number six, write that vehicle presentation as a demo drive. Now, a lot of dealerships have a policy where you have to drive off the lot first. So you want to do a demo drive. You want to, you want to do a thorough demo drive. And here's the a, here's a thing that I always say. Guys, if somebody's going to buy a $10,000 car, a $5,000 car, a $50,000 car, it doesn't matter. You don't want to just take them in a the car and drive around the block and come back. Come on, man. Show them that you care. Let them drive the car. Some dealerships have predetermined test routes, okay? Predetermined test routes. If that's your dealership, then you have to go with that. But you know what I used to do? I used to take them if the customer drove on the highway. What do you think I did? I took them on the highway. I let them drive 20, 30 minutes. Let them feel that car. Let them get emotionally involved here. Guys, this is it. They're going to get emotional. They're going to use their senses. And you should use that. Say, man, don't you love the way that car feels? Man, I love the smell of a new car, don't you? See how you're getting their senses involved? Hey, can you touch and feel how that really does work? So get the senses involved. Let them drive. If they drive on the highway, bring them on the highway. So for example, but if they're an older customer maybe and they don't drive very much on the highway, then maybe you shouldn't take them on the highway. Take them on the city streets. However, let them drive it and feel it. By the way, always go with them. Okay, always go with them on a test drive. Very important. Here's another thing about that. Never go on a test drive without a driver's license. Guys, this is so important. This is for safety purposes, okay? So I want to back up a little bit. If they do not have a driver's license, don't go on a test drive. You always want to take a copy of their license and leave it with the sales manager at the front desk, okay? This way they know you're going on a test drive. They can help you with the process, but at the same time, it does protect you. But back to the demo drive. On the demo drive, don't sell. Don't sell. Just let them enjoy. Let them enjoy it. If they ask you a question, answer with a question and tie it down. If they say something like this, man, I love the way this car drives. This car drives nice. Think about what you'd say. You know what I would say? I would say, doesn't it? Doesn't it? That's it. Get the yes. Hey, man, that car, this car really handles very, very well. Sure does, doesn't it? That's it. That's all you need to say. Let them enjoy the car. You don't need to talk much on the test drive, okay? Let them enjoy the vehicle. The demo drive is there for them. Guys, 20 minutes on the demo drive. Don't worry about it. Go for it. Then the next step is when you come back to the dealership. If they have a trade, you want to park next to the trade. If they don't have a trade, you want to park wherever the sold sign is or wherever it's predetermined for you to park. You want to get out of the car and you want to ask a trial closing question. You want to ask them very simple. Hey, folks, if all the terms are agreeable, if we can make all the terms agreeable today, would you like to drive this car home now? And you want to ask that question specifically. You deserve it. You spent an hour, an hour and a half, two hours with your customer. You deserve to ask them to buy it. Hey, if there's a trade-in, park next to the trade. Get out of the trade, and then you want to say, 
hey folks, if we can make all the terms that are agreeable on this particular vehicle, which of these two vehicles would you like to have in your driveway tonight? You see, you want to ask for the business, and there's a reason why you want to directly ask here. First of all, they just came back from the test drive, so their emotions are at their highest level. You treated them with respect. You've done the right thing. You've got them the right car. You've earned the right. You flat out say, hey, guys, if all the terms are agreeable, would you like to take this car home with you today? And if they turn around, there's only one of two answers they can give you. Yes or no. Okay? That's what you want. Hey, if they, if they give you a yes or they give you a no, guess what? The answer is the same. Great. Follow me. If they say, yeah, hey, I, you know, if folks follow the terms of agreement, would you like to take this car home with you right now? Yes, awesome, follow me, let's go get those numbers for you. Boom, leave, start walking, they're going to follow you, sit them down. If they say, no, not today, man, I got to think about it, Matt, say, hey, great, no problem, I appreciate that. Well, let, let's go inside, I'll get all the numbers so you make an intelligent decision, follow me. Either way, say, great, no problem, guys, it's okay. That's what you want, you want a yes or you want to no, that's why you want to ask that question. Folks, if all the terms are agreeable on this particular vehicle, would you like to take this car home with you right now? It's beautiful. Now, here's the key. When you sit down, you got to write them up. you got to write them up. If there's a trade walk, I mean, if there's a trade-in, you're going to want to walk the trade, do a silent walk around. Now, you're going to want to walk the trade, and this is very important. I mean, we can spend a whole day on a trade walk. Okay, if there's a trade and you want to go and you want to write down the particulars, you want to go walk around that trade with that customer before, because guess what? If they have a ding in the door, if they have bad tires, if they have, you know, scratches on their car, you're going to point it out to them because they're coming in with a predetermined value of, of what that car is worth in their mind. And I've never had anybody in my 26 years in the car business say to me, hey, Matt, you gave me so much money on my trade. I can't believe it. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's never happened. But every single time they say it's not enough for my trade. So it's important that you do a trade walk. Guys, we can spend an, another hour on this. So, so we'll do a trade walk actually meeting, maybe the next one, because this is so, so, so important. We'll actually take a trade and we'll walk around. Maybe we'll do it live if we can. All right. However, this is where you want to write them up. You want to go for the write-up. You want to write them up, get all their information, put them in the system, because you're going to give them numbers at this point. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back and you can give them the first pencil, which is the next step, the first pencil. And the first pencil is very simple. When you come out with your customer, you want to make sure that you have your, 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 your sheet that's given you from your manager because you're going to enter into negotiation, okay? And what you're going to do here is you're going to come out with the sheet. Don't show them the numbers right away because you don't want their, their mindset to go here. You want to say just this. Are you ready? Hey, Mr. Jones, great news, man. The hard part's over. Found the car that you want, options you chose. Hey, we even got the color you want. Am I right? Yes. Awesome, easy parts paying for it. We got many options for you to choose from. Whichever option you choose, hey, it's great with me, man. I'm just excited to earn your business. Is that fair? Yeah, great. And now you present your numbers. It's very important, I gotta, I gotta reiterate that. This is important, if you're in the car business or in any business, it's important that you say this. Great news, Mr. Jones, we got the car, the hard part's over. Found the car you want, options you chose, with the color you need, that the color, you even got the color you want, am I right? Yeah. Awesome. Easy parts paying for it. Notice my papers this way. Easy parts paying for it. We have many options for you to choose from. Whichever one you choose, hey man, it's great with me. I'm just excited to earn your business. Is that fair? Yes. Great. Go into the numbers and show the numbers. And now you start to negotiate and you get your first pencil. Whatever that number is, you're going to go for your, your first pencil. And the manager is going to turn around and they're going to help you with this. Especially if you're new in the business. Now if you've got a lot of experience, you're going to start to negotiate a little bit. Okay? Now, we're running out a little bit of time here. So again, after the first pencil, <clears throat> you want to go and get your manager TO. Unless you can close that deal up right there, wrap it up, get it all done, then all of a sudden, boom, you go get your manager TO. Your manager's going to help you with the process. Your manager's going to help to close up that deal. Then you're going to go into finance, do the paperwork, delivery, and then the other steps, right? So look, guys, it's a process. The 10 steps is a process to the sale. This process happens every time, and I'm going to say this before I end. Can you go for me? If the customer walks in and says, I already test drove this in another vehicle, I want to get right into the numbers. I don't want to waste any time. If you go from number one, step one, to meet and greet, to start to write up on step eight, you lost the process. You're not in control. Here's why it's very important that you do not skip the steps. Because when you go from meet and greet to write up, hey, no problem, let's go write up those numbers, you may think you're saving two hours, but you have no control of the process because you haven't made a friend. 
You haven't made a friend. You haven't even done a proper selection. Hey, I want to buy that car right there. I already test drove one at another dealership, and I want to get right to the numbers. I don't have much time. Great, no problem. Let's go. No. Sit him down. Make a friend. Don't skip the process. You can't go from step one to step eight without screwing up the sale. It's never happened, guys. So important. Same thing with this. Meet and greet down this demo drive already. You go to a demo drive. You're going to meet them. Hey, I already test drove. Let's go for a demo drive. Great, no problem. You skipped all these steps. See, it's a process. Meet and greet, make a friend, touch the desk, uh, vehicle selection, vehicle presentation, demo drive, trial close or trade walk, and then you come in for the close, write them up, teal the deal to the manager. This is the process that works every time. It's the process that works every time. So it's real important, guys, that, that, that you work this process. Jot these down. Write this down. And this works for any business. I don't even care if it's online sales. It's the same process. It's just a little bit different. That's it. The process is the process. If you follow the process, it'll work, and you'll see a major, major increase in your income. Brendan, do we have any questions on the, uh, on the Facebook Live? Just a lot of hellos. A lot of hellos. Well, hello, everybody out there. I appreciate you guys uh, joining us today. It's about 926, so I'm going to kind of wrap this up here in a couple of minutes. We actually have a sales training class starting here in a few minutes. Yes. So Adriana Luna <clears throat> asks, what if the customer does not want to go inside? Hey, Adriana, how are you over at Miami Lakes uh, Chevy? Miami Lakes Chevy. Good to see you. Adriana just went through our class. Great question, Adriana. Hey, if the customer doesn't want to go inside, they've probably been bitten before. That's probably why they haven't wanted to go inside. So in other words, they probably went to a dealership already. They visited the dealership already. And the reason why they don't want to go inside is because they got treated like crap. Now, I know you, Adriana. you got that beautiful smile. you got that innocent look. You can even turn around to the customer and say, look, I can appreciate that you don't want to go in, and, and I understand that. Let me ask you something. Have you visited another dealership previously? Yeah, exactly. Look, I'm not here to bite you. I promise I'm not here to bite you, but I do want to find out some information I can do to help you the Kia. and try to get them over to back into the store. You're over at the Kia store. Okay, Chevy, Kia. You're going to be at the Kia store. See, so that's probably why they don't want to go in. Now, if they're really insistent about not going in, that's fine. So you're going to keep going through the steps, still make a friend with them, but you can start to do it a little bit outside. Start asking questions so you can start to gain control of the process, and then when you're ready, when they're ready, when they loosen up to you a little bit, say, hey, look, no problem. I can go get that particular vehicle for you. I know what you're here to look for. Follow me. Let me go get you a copy of your driver's license. We'll get you set up for a test drive. So eventually you can get them in. Great question, though. But remember, if somebody doesn't want to go in and they're adamant about it, it's probably because they got treated like crap somewhere else. And you know what? You can say, hey, did you go to another dealership and you got treated like crap? Yeah, I got you. I'm not here to bite you. You know, I'm here to help you. Hopefully we can find a vehicle that you want. If we can, I'd love the opportunity to sell it to you. Just be upfront with people. Just be honest with people. See, people want honesty. That's all they want. They want directness and they want honesty. So I hope that answers your question, Adriana. Great to see you. Looking forward to seeing you over at the Kia store when we come visit. Probably be down there this week or next week. Uh, and I know you're doing great. I'm hearing great things down there. Any other questions, Brendan, before we wrap it up? Just a lot of hellos. Well, hello to everybody. Thanks for joining us today on our Tuesday morning sales meeting. Excited to be with you guys. The process, the 10 steps of the sale. Guys, if you can, take a screenshot of this right here. You want to keep this. This is very, very important. Make sure that you have this and you work this every time. Don't skip the steps. Stay true to the process, and the process will stay true to you. You guys have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Great to see you all.